What you guys got another video here for you on how to build your own computer repair utility kit. Now this is going to be a pretty in-depth video, but what would you want to use this for? Well, if you run a PC repair business or you're a hobbyist or you run some sort of a friends and family PC help, you might want to use this utility to basically boot up to it and install Windows. It can have different versions of Windows to install. You can have Hiram's Boot CD on here, WinPE's on here, uh, antivirus uh, scanners like Kaspersky Rescue CD, and you can even have a multi-boot uh, Linux installer if you want. It's entirely up to you. So we're going to be using a totally different piece of software for this one, and uh, we'll show you how to set this up. And I'll also show you how to change the uh, background. Some people wanted to know how to change the background to their own uh, custom background, and some people also wanted to know how to uh, do some other things on here so we'll talk about that during the installation so we've got the, this tool this time we're going to try this one out this is called win setup from usb yes it's another piece of software you can choose whatever one you want to use when from the videos that i've been making on this one so we've got our usb flash drive plugged in and i'm going to go up to rm prep usb and click on that button there you can see it selected our usb flash drive and i'm going to leave that as is so it's detected our USB flash drive and we've got it on the first selection here. We've also got it set to NTFS and force use LBA calls. You can have this set to FAT32 if you have a small enough uh, USB flash drive, but as it's 64 gigabytes, so let's go OK here. It will erase the drive, so I'm going to click OK to allow it to erase the drive. This will completely wipe the drive clean and start from fresh. Once we've done this, we'll be ready to uh, do our next stage which is to install our grub for dos just click on grub for dos here and this will install it now there's quite a few ways you can go about uh, building these this is just one way so you can choose whichever way you want to do it but this is just one way if you want to try and see some other ways let me know in the comment section below i'll do my best to make those for you uh, so that's now done we've got grub for dos installed just copy the grldr file over so we're going to click ok and let that happen and that's good. So now we can close off the RM Prep USB and we're ready to rock and roll. So let's go. So we've got the, uh, let's just close this off. I thought we'll close that. So let's just close that off. Okay, so we've got our USB flash drive plugged in and we've got our files all done and copied across. What I'm going to do now is I've got my Windows XP CD in and I've got this in my DVD ROM rewriter drive, which is an external one which I've plugged in. So now I need to Put the tick inside windows xp here or 2000 and i can navigate to my dvd rom drive and select that from the list and that will install from there so click select the folder and then we can accept windows eula there by saying i accept that's all ready to go now so what we need to do next is select the windows vista 7 8 and 10 and server uh, tick box and then navigate to our iso file you can see here it does say if you need a UEFI support for 64-bit versions of Windows and then you need to select FAT32 partition. So that's what that says there. So we're going to agree to that and then we're going to go into a desktop and select our ISO image here. And we can go there and select that and that's good to go. Next up we can go ahead and just select the Linux ISOs and you can choose whatever Linux ISOs you want here but I'm going to choose my Cronus 2020 uh, this is for Linux versions this is not the Windows based one but if you haven't got the Windows based one then you will need to select a different box but we're going to go for this one here so I'm just going to give this a name and uh, we can put that inside there so I'm just going to give this a space maybe and call this a Cronus 2020 click OK so what we're going to do here next is go to go and this will then start to prep our USB flash drive and get it all ready to install. So we'll just let that go and we're going to click on say yes here and let that go. And it will take a bit of time so be patient. Now sometimes this program does look like it's uh, frozen and it's uh, stalled but it hasn't. It's just uh, just basically getting it all ready and eventually it will just kick into uh, in action and you'll see that green bar coming up down on the bottom so don't start closing it off once it's started you can see it's starting to get things ready here now i did notice a few people saying they were having trouble with some of the uh, tools uh, that they were using 
and uh, couldn't get it working well maybe try easy to boot that's a lot more easier to get working you just drag and drop the ISOs into the required folders that's probably why that program was invented in the first place for people to get it just to work because that's what it does it does all the hard work for you all you need to do is drop the ISOs into the required folders and it will work these are a little bit more finicky and they do take a little bit of time and patience and you need to work with your project and also you might need to know how to edit the menu file inside there to make changes if something's broken you may need to also change your BIOS settings, you may need to make it legacy boot, change uh, the secure boot settings and also use USB 2.0 uh, port on your computer. There's a bunch of things you need to do to get them working. We've got our menu which you can edit as well. Be very careful when editing this because you can mess it up and it will mess up your um, boot. You can see here when you enter these in you can just copy these over and just change the names of them I've done that before and it's worked fine so you can do that but that's probably for another video uh, but again you can sort of tweak these to how you like them you just have to take a bit of patience and learn a bit about it uh, but other than that it's pretty straightforward once you get the idea of how it works another thing I will say is these videos are for your education and your enjoyment so you can use whatever method you want there's a bunch of other ways of doing things just find the way that works best for you and uh, stick with it so you don't have to do it my way you might want to use a uh, easy to boot you might want to use the one I did yesterday or this one or choose whichever way you want to do it okay so let's just add in one more I'm going to add in Kaspersky rescue uh, disk here now if this doesn't work and something is broken I'll just have to rectify it and that's what you have to do you have to sort of it's trial and error really and it is time consuming but that's what you have to do if you want to build uh, something to your needs so I'm going to go into here and click on Kaspersky rescue disk and we're going to get this installed on here now this is based on Linux so I'm going to use the Linux ISO area here and again you can uh, choose whatever you like here uh, to get yours working so let me get this uh, installed and get this uh, fired up here so let's fire it up using the QEMU and test our little menu system here to see what it looks like. Now if there's any problems here or one of them doesn't work, you can always fix that. And that's what you have to do. You have to spit trial and error really. So you have to play around with it and try to get it to work. So you can see this is what you're going to be looking at, the grub for dos um, menu system here and if you want to make that look a bit more prettier you can use the custom rename uh, feature inside there to give it much more better names if you wish it's entirely up to you which way you go about doing it so you can see here we have got our Windows XP we've got also our Windows 7 if I click on this one here it will take us to uh, all the versions of Windows which we've installed on our USB flash drive this should have a normal menu here saying Windows 10 and also Windows 8.1 and Windows 7 SP1 uh, right there. So you can see here that's what it's going to look like. So we have got those options available to us. So let's take a look at how we can customize the background image on our build that we've done uh, so we can uh, put our own image on there. Now there is some restrictions on this but this GFX boot customizer does make it a lot more easier to customize the background image uh, for for your needs you can put your own logo in here and you can put your own background uh, in there as well so let me just show you how this works it's a pretty nice bit of kit and it makes life a lot easier and you can choose your own images now I've just quickly grabbed a bunch of images here they're not ideal really uh, for what I want to do but I'm just going to quickly show you see it's a bit um, pushed and squished so you need to get the right sizes for your images that you're using so let me go ahead and change that to something a little bit more uh, that fits the needs here and uh, of course you can spend more time putting your sizes and logos in there to fit properly and make it look a much more nicer but you get the general idea of what I'm trying to show you here so let's go ahead and also change this background here and there's been many different backgrounds you can use you can actually use the desktop background like I've just done here it will crop it and make that um, fit the background there and that's what you can do or you can have your own custom backgrounds and choose those as well like so and uh, basically once you've got that you can build it you can see it's a 800 by 600 recommended or you can do 1024 by 768 
uh, depending on what you want to set this up. So I'm just going to quickly build this and configure it and it should uh, build that for us. There we go. That's all done. And now we can use that in our build if we wanted to. It's very simple and easy to do. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So let me apply the 1024 by 768 in there as well. And that's now done. So just let that finish off. And I'll show you how to implement these into your flash drive and make it work, okay? Okay, so let's uh, move on to the next step and get this working on our build. So you can see this file here. This is the file we've just created. So you can copy this file. Let me just put this into our folder here inside our USB flash drive. I'm going to create a folder and this will keep it nice and tidy. You can have a bunch of these put in there so you can change them up whenever you like. So I'm going to quickly make a folder here called GFX menu, something like that. And we can now put that file inside that GFX menu. Let me just copy it over, copy and paste. There we go. And uh, we can rename that if we want to, but I'm just going to copy that name. What I need to do now is go into the menu um, and open this up in Notepad. I'm going to open this up in Notepad++. Up the top here, you should see an area called Timeout 10. That's the timeout that it stays on the screen. So I'm just going to put that underneath there and just add in our name here. So I'm going to call this GFX menu. And of course, we're going to go space forward slash GFX menu. And then we can go forward slash and then we can put the name of our file uh, inside here. So let me just paste that in there right now. There we go. And we can click on save and that will save it. And then when we start up our program again, let me just start this up to show, show you what it looks like. And then I'll boot it up to the PC because some people wanted to see that part and I'll show you how it looks. Now, of course, this is just a tutorial, so I would need to finish off and tweak this a little bit more to make sure it's all working properly. And there may be still problems with some of these ISOs, so I'd need to look into that a little bit further and make sure everything is working fine. But that's the menu. That's what it will look like now when it boots up. You can see I've got a countdown timer there. And of course, I can't load them up inside here uh, because obviously uh, this is just a QEMU. But I will boot up to it just to show you and hopefully I'll just start one of these up so you can see how it works. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So let's get into the BIOS here. We're in the BIOS here and we're going to go to boot and we need to change the boot order. So we can see here we've got boot option one. I'm going to change this to my USB flash drive. You can see it says UEFI. I'm going to change that over. And once we've done that, we can take a look at secure boot. Now let's take a look at secure boot here. Now secure boot is on and I've got it set to other operating systems as well. So you can see I can clear all the secure boot keys for this particular type of motherboard. Yours may be different. So I'm just going to turn that off for now and then go back and we'll make a save on here and we'll save this and then we'll boot up to the actual device and see what it looks like. So I'm booting up for the first time on a, on a PC and you can see because we're in UEFI mode we're only getting uh, the Windows 10, Windows 8 and Windows 7 and uh, the PE version. We're not getting the Grub for DOS showing up here that's because we've not got legacy mode we're in uh, UEFI so if I put the uh, legacy mode on you should be able to see all of that booting up uh, correctly so I'll show you that in a second so you can push these and they still will work they should still uh, load up and start to work and I'll just quickly do one here to show you you can see that's loading in and that should then start giving me the option to install Windows 10 everything's working okay there we go. we go I'll continue there and I can continue to install Windows 10 from there so let me just go back and we'll try Windows 7 and see if that's working okay just to make sure it's okay and uh, we'll try that right now. So let me go back here, reboot the system, and we'll go back in. Now, you won't get the Grub for DOS here because we need to enable uh, a feature inside the BIOS, which I'll show you here. So you can see here, all we're getting is this here. We're not getting a Cronus or anything like that. 
uh, because we're in uh, UEFI mode. So let me just quickly uh, boot up to Windows 7 here, see if this is working okay. So push enter here and we'll see if that's loading up. That's loading okay and that's working fine. So we can go ahead and try another thing here. So that's working perfectly fine here. So I can install Windows 7 from there if I wanted to. So let's go back into the BIOS here and uh, make a change here. So let me go into advanced mode here. So I'm going to go into advanced mode, which is down the bottom. Sometimes it's up the top here, but I think it's down the bottom. There we go. Just click on this one and uh, we'll go in there and make some changes. So what I want to do is go over to the boot tab and we want to go into CSM. If you look in CSM, it's disabled. If I enable this now, what will happen is we should be able to get that um, Grub for DOS screen up. So we go ahead and enable CSM. And you can see it's set for UEFI and legacy mode. And if I wanted to make this just legacy mode only, I could do that if I wanted to or make it UEFI mode only. But legacy mode only will uh, what we'll try here now. So I'm just going to quickly take, take a look at this and show you this one. So push F10 and push yes. And this will then load up and you can see we've now got the grub screen up on our monitor. I can then try one of these here. So let's go ahead and try um, a Cronus here. So let's boot into a Cronus and see if that's working OK. And again, you can change the menu here to make it look much nicer by doing what I should do when you're doing the build process. And of course, this works perfectly fine, as you can see here. No problems at all. Let's just go into a Cronus true image here just to make sure everything is working OK. And that should load in and we should get to the next screen and that should be working fine okay so it's gone off and we should get to the screen in a minute if it's working okay a bit of text coming up there we go and everything's working okay so we know Acronis is working fine so all we need to do next is um, try something else here to make sure everything's working okay now of course uh, you can set yours up to how you like. So I'll try one more thing. Let's go ahead and we'll go back to the menu here and I'll try Kaspersky Rescue Disk here and we'll try booting from there and see if that loads up and works okay. And there you go, it's working fine. So, And you can see these uh, types of projects work perfectly fine when you've got them set up right. Now what I'd advise you to do, add a couple of uh, ISOs at a time and get them working and then you can always add more at a later date. Don't just spend like four hours of adding, you know, 50 different ISOs of different programs and it doesn't work and then you do, and you're going to end up with loads of problems. OK, so just start off real small and uh, go with that. If you don't want to use something like this, remember, easy to boot is super easy. All you need to do is drop them into the designated folders that you need and away you go. It should work and that's what it's designed for. This is a little bit more complex and a little bit more troublesome to get working properly. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a great day. I shall see you again real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos. Mm -hmm.